Hello, everyone, and welcome to International TEFL Academy's video on teaching English in Europe. My name is Shay. I'll be your host, co-hosting with Helen. All right, guys, let's get right into it. We're going to talk about hiring procedures and general knowledge of the teaching market in Europe. This video is going to cover the specifics of Europe's various teaching markets and that, you know, a new certified teacher will be able to take advantage of. So please contact your advisor after this if you do have any further questions, any specific questions, and to get enrolled. If you don't know who your advisor is, just give the general line a call and somebody will assist you. And the number is below. So here's our agenda for today's video. Why teach in Europe? All of your other options, why choose Europe? An overview to the European marketplace. And then we're going to dive into some specific country options that you have there. The Czech Republic, Italy, Spain, some fun places. Che, yes. why teach in Europe? Why don't you tell me? I will. The answer is simple. Basically, the culture is amazing. There's many different cultures within a small region. Cuisine, country to country, amazing. You get to eat your way through a continent. There's architectural beauty throughout castles, bridges, landmarks that are centuries and centuries old. Something that we don't have here in the U.S. Uh, strong economies there maintain this teaching market. And the history there from ancient Greece to the Roman Empire, I mean, it has it all. That's where history is. And of course, many different languages. That was my goal going to Spain. I wanted to, to learn Spanish. So it's a really great way to go and learn a language. And of course, tons of affordable regional travel. You get to try, you know, all these different countries, get to visit them, even if you're not actually teaching in it. So here we have some photos from our ITA alumni teaching in Europe. And while we're on the topic of alumni, why don't we hear from one of them right now? My name is Andrea Perkins. I'm 23 years old and I'm originally from Atlanta, Georgia. I'm currently working and living in Prague, Czech Republic, and I decided to take the online TEFL class with International TEFL Academy. I decided to do my certification for TEFL with International TEFL Academy because they were so helpful when I called up and asked them questions. I got to talk to a real person and she shared her experiences with me. Um, and at first I was a little bit nervous because I didn't know if this was something that people really did. They just did a TEFL certificate and then were able to find a job in any country they wanted. Um, but they, you can, uh, and I was able to. Job hunting in Prague is probably a little bit different than job hunting in other countries because I moved here without having a job. When I first moved here, I started looking at some of the expats' websites um, and some of the job posting websites, and I applied for like 20, 40 jobs within the first two weeks that I was here. I'm working at an English school that's um, pre-nursery through year 13, and I'm doing learning support assistance with a student who has um, some learning disabilities and also needs some language assistance. Um, and my TEFL training has really helped me with this job. I probably wouldn't have gotten this job if I wasn't TEFL certified. Um, the teachers and the staff there felt that I had a little more knowledge than most other candidates about teaching in the classroom environment because of my TEFL certificate. There are lots and lots of language schools here so it's really easy to find a job once you're here. I chose to do my TEFL certification during my senior year of school because I've always wanted to travel. I didn't know what I wanted to do after graduation, but I knew that and I've always wanted to live and work in another country besides the U.S. It's really easy to make friends in Prague. There's a huge expat community here. Lots of people from the U.S. England, Canada, who have come here and have lived here for years. There's um, an enormous community. There's an online community. There's a website called expats.cz and they have um, restaurant reviews, postings for jobs, for flat shares. Um, 
just about all the information you could want about what's going on in Prague and how to live and adjust to living in Prague. Prague is a really great city. There's always a lot going on. I love to go walk around in the parks and there's huge parks. There's one right near our apartment that I go walk in almost every day. Um, and most of the parks have beer gardens. And it's always fun to go sit and have a beer with your friends. I meet my friends there a lot. I would recommend Prague to someone who wants to come and teach English. It's a, it's a great place to live and it's really easy to find a job, especially for first year teachers. So here is an overview of teaching English in Europe. So for the market, the economic and cultural integration of Europe, uh, the European Union, for example, has increased the demand for using the English language. And contracts there are typically 10 months and one year uh, with the option to continue on if you'd like. The peak hiring seasons are September, October, and then again in January. Now that's not to say there aren't any jobs outside of those times, but those are the best times where the most jobs are available. And the positions you can plan on uh, for teaching English are going to be working primarily with adults in private language institutes. For those of you that want to teach children in Europe, there are some great public school options in Spain, France, Turkey, Georgia, and Hungary, as you see there. And when it comes to money, now you're going to be able to cover all of your expenses. Uh, you're going to be able to go out and enjoy yourself. You're going to be able to do some regional traveling. Uh, but in the end, you know, you will break even after all of that. So don't plan on paying for student loans or paying for a car back home. Uh, but nonetheless, uh, you won't have to be digging into your own savings to go enjoy yourself over there as a full-time paid professional. Degree requirements, a uh, bachelor's degree is typically required in Western Europe, especially. You see some exceptions there, Bulgaria, Poland, uh, Slovakia, Spain is a very popular place that does not require a four-year degree. And for those of you interested in a shorter term experience in Europe, we have resources for summer camp jobs uh, as well there on the continent. All right, let's talk about visas for teaching English abroad. Let's do it. Let's go over the basics here, and then when we go through the specific countries, we'll talk about which country uses which, okay? All right, first of all, we've got a tourist visa. This allows a person to enter and travel in a country for you know, a limited period of time, typically around 90 days. And this is going to be the most common visa to, that a teacher has in teaching in Europe. Another option, though, is a work visa. This is a legally sponsored visa. Uh, by It's sponsored by a business so that you can work legally in Europe, in that country. This can take anywhere from one to 12 months to process. So some, some countries do value these work visas and others don't. So each country has different procedures and we'll go into the details of that. And a student visa actually can be used in Europe. This is when a student, you, as a teacher, you enroll in an accredited class or university. And this allows students to legally work in, in Europe. So it's often you know 20 to 24 hours a week. So it's sort of a loophole. Uh, time, money, paperwork, and interviews at embassies or, or consulates are needed with this option. So many of you are probably familiar with the European Union or the EU. Uh, this is a collection of member countries in Europe that have an economic and political union. And here you see the Schengen area. And this, once you have entered into this area with the stamp on your passport, essentially you have uh, free roaming uh, through these countries without having to go through customs when you cross into another country through its border. So, for example, it's kind of similar to being here at ITA's headquarters in Chicago, Illinois, and then driving to Indiana. They don't check you at the Indiana border um, for your documents. Uh, so it's uh, a free free travel zone once you're inside of this area. All right, let's get country specific. We're going to talk about the Czech Republic first. So peak hiring seasons, Shay, you brushed on this earlier. They're going to be September and January. Uh, the interview procedure in the Czech Republic is really unique. It is face-to-face. -face. There's definitely face-to-face -face opportunities, but also you can do some interviews in advance. So if you want to line up a job in advance, this is a great place to look into. And also visa. Basically, you can either get a work visa, which is less common, or a Zivno, 
business visa. And this is really unique in, in Europe. So if you want to get hired in advance and get an actual working or business visa, check out the Czech Republic. You've been there, right, Shay? Sure have. Did you like it? Loved it. Oh, me too. I want to go back. Uh, Andrea said, I would recommend coming to Prague. It's a gorgeous city with lots of history and tons of fun and exciting things to do. There are bars, clubs, cafes, and things to do any night of the week. Okay, here we have France, a very popular destination, as you can imagine. Uh, again, similar to Czech Republic, peak hiring seasons, September and January, and interview procedures here are going to be face-to-face. -face. Now, for visa information, France, as you can imagine, Helen, is a popular place. Oh, eh? Yes, it is. And so our alumni teaching there, you know, many of them have been successful in using a student visa. And a student visa, uh, as you talked about earlier, uh, essentially enroll yourself maybe in a French language course or a French university course. Get yourself a student visa that has that working provision to it uh, so that you're more marketable in a challenging environment. There is also uh, a foreign language assistant program in the public schools there. And our uh, team here at ITA can help you out with providing you more resources for that. Here we have another alumni quote from Aaron teaching in France. Go in with a game plan. Seek advice from colleagues and have fun. Be ready to participate in your country's culture and in your community. I love teaching in France and had a great time. And she's absolutely right. Talk with your advisor, put together the game plan, and you can make it happen. All right, Shay, now we're going to talk about a country that sometimes gets overlooked as a teaching market, and that country is Georgia. They have a really great public school program, so if you want to get hired in advance, this is a great place to look into. Uh, the Georgian government really wants ESL teachers to be teaching in the public schools. It makes sense. English is essentially the international second language now. So check out their website here. There's a link here if you want to see upcoming start dates for, for, this, different, for this program. And visas, how it works for Georgia, is you're typically working on a tourist visa that lasts 360 days, technically as a volunteer. And so, like I said a little bit before, you're going to be interviewing in advance. You apply online and you do Skype interviews. So it's all set up for you before you go. And this actually has a big old package of benefits going along with it. So you can get a round trip and vacation airfare if you work there for two consecutive semesters. So you go to Georgia, visit Spain for the weekend, and that's going to be paid for accommodations and meals with the host family is also provided, medical insurance, and a stipend that actually comes out to around 300 US dollars a month. And even after that, a cell phone. I can tell you my cell phone uh, in Spain was so useful. So it's awesome that they, they provide that for you. Now let's look at another alumni quote from Sarah. Sarah taught in Georgia. What she has to say is be open-minded about experiencing a culture that can be very different from your own. Some things that are that you think are rude or weird might not be so abroad and vice versa. So really just being open-minded, Shay, I think is really important when going into this. Here we have some ITA alumni pictures from France, Czech Republic, Georgia. Can you see yourself there? I can. Germany, another very popular teaching marketplace. So similar to what we've been saying for other countries, peak hiring times, September and January. Uh, interview procedures here are done face to face. Uh, a great thing about Germany, this is a country where you can uh, get sponsored for a work visa. And essentially you're gonna set up a residency there. It's a residency visa that you'll obtain. Uh, please talk with your ITA advisor uh, more specifically on how to make that happen. But again, great marketplace overall. And here we have another alumni quote from Megan. They say Las Vegas is the city that never sleeps, but compared to Berlin, Vegas is a preteen with a bedtime of 11 p.m. I've already booked a flight. It's going to be a blast. It's going to be a party, apparently. Berlin. That sounds awesome. All right, now let's chat about Italy. Such a great country. Have you been there? Sure have. Throughout all of it? A lot of it, yeah. Yeah, It's cool because top it. to bottom is completely different. It's an amazing country. All right, peak hiring seasons there. You guessed it. It's going to be September, October, and in January. So you are going to be face-to-face -face on the ground in Italy interviewing. And again, here, the most common visa, what you're going to be doing is working on a tourist visa, so working under the table. But a student visa option is, is a great option as well to look into. 
And let's hear from another alumni that was teaching Italy. So definitely go for it. It is a once in a lifetime opportunity. Don't let fear or of failure or lack of money stop you. If you want it badly enough, you will make it happen. The hardest step is buying the ticket to leave. Everything after that falls into place if it's meant to be. I like that. And here we have some more alumni photos from Germany and Italy. And it looks picturesque to me. It looks like a good time. I'm in. And now on to Russia. So actually, Helen, one of my best friends growing up was a H Russian history buff. Ah. And he always wanted to go there and spend some time there. And he found out his, the best way for him to do that was teaching English. And he said, I'm going to go teach there for six months or maybe a year. Well, 10 years later, he's still there. He still absolutely there. loves it. So if you want to be a lifer, you can do that. That's awesome. So Russia. Okay. So uh, as you see here, peak hiring season, a little bit different now. This is a year-round marketplace, and that just underscores the sheer size of the TEFL market. So it's never a bad time to start. And another great thing is that your interview procedures are done in advance over the phone, via Skype, or if you'd still like to go there to uh, check out schools face-to-face -face, uh, before deciding, you can do that too. Visa information, you will be sponsored for a working visa there as an English language teacher. And you can find flight reimbursements, you can find housing or certainly housing stipend. Uh, so some extra things as well to get you to consider a place like Russia. And here we have a great quote from our alumna, Sydney. I would suggest being open and eager to learn and to explore the new culture. Learning the language and being open to meeting people from a totally different background than my own have truly enhanced my experience here. That's awesome. Go Google pictures of St. Petersburg right now. You're gonna be inspired. You're gonna to wanna to go teach in Russia. It's amazing. All right, Shay, let's talk about Spain. You taught there, right? I did. I loved it. You've been there too, haven't you? You spent I some have. good time there. I loved it. Awesome. All right, peak hiring seasons in this country are gonna be you know, late September, October, and in January. So very similar to most of Europe. And again, interview procedures here are gonna be face-to-face -face in the country in Spain. You get to actually meet your employer, see the location before you decide where you wanna teach. How visas work in Spain, you're either gonna be working on a tourist visa, which is the most common way to do it, or a student visa is a great option as well. Uh, your advisor can give you a more detailed information about both of these. So get in touch with them with any questions you have. This is also a country that has a great uh, public school program. So this is a Spanish Ministry of Education's Cultural Ambassadors Program. This gives you the opportunity to work with children in public schools. So if you wanted to teach children, this is a great program to look into. They place you all throughout Spain and you get a stipend of 700 euro a month. So applications for this are typically due in February, uh, between February or April. So these also will be, you know, you'll be interviewing over the phone. So if you wanna have a job set up for you, know where you're gonna go before you even leave the country, before you leave your home country, this is a great country to look into and a great program to check out. Now let's hear from Lexi. What did she have to say about Spain? Don't let fear change your mind. I was such a mess before I left for Spain. I was worried about everything. I wanted it to be perfect. And I was terrified of all the possibilities. Just make the jump and trust yourself. I agree, Lexi. Sometimes you just got to go for it. Okay, let's talk about Turkey. Actually, this is the next place I really want to see. I really want to go there too. Do you know Istanbul is the only city that's on two continents? Actually, I did know that, but... <laughs> <laughs> Dang it, I thought I had you. All right. Okay, great. Let's talk about it. So, uh, peak hiring season. Everybody, this is a year-round peak hiring season. Turkey has a lot of job opportunities when you're a trained professional English language teacher. Uh, another great benefit is the interviews are done in advance, again, over the phone, via Skype. Uh, or you can go there to uh, check out these schools face-to-face -face if you'd like to do that before determining your best fit. Visa information, a work visa is provided. Again, a lot of nice benefits here. Uh, you can find flight reimbursement, a housing stipend, payment for visa costs. So a lot of extra things you can get here. Uh, they want you to be there and you, you want to be there too. Uh, here's a great quote from one of our alumna Annie, and she says, I say, go with your gut. 
that's what I did. You're probably going to overthink everything and psych yourself out. If you're even remotely interested in teaching abroad, then I think you should do it. I've had a fabulous experience here and would love to have everyone see the true colors of Turkey. And that's actually a very interesting place where she's at there in that picture, Cappadocia, which she says looks like Mars, completely different landscape. So after this video, go check out Turkey. That looks amazing. Where are these? I guess that these are from the countries we've just covered. Which ones would those be? Let's see. I see Russia. I see St. Petersburg. I also see Turkey. I see Istanbul. And I see Spain from my experience. I just know that's Spain. You just passed the test? Thank you. All right. Now, we covered some really awesome Western, Euro Western European countries, but they're not the only ones you can teach in. Other markets are going to be Portugal, which works almost the same as Spain's ESL teaching market, Greece as well. Um, the economy there is currently struggling though, so it can be more difficult for non-EU citizens to find ESL teaching positions. But I say if you want that Mediterranean lifestyle, you should check out Turkey or Spain. Both of those markets are gonna be awesome. Uh, Belgium, Switzerland, Netherlands, Scandinavia. Uh, because English is you know, very widely spoken throughout these countries, it kind of makes it a more difficult market to be teaching in. It's not such a strong market. So it can be difficult for non-EU citizens. But you know what's good about teaching in Europe? Shay? What's that, Helen? You get to go visit all of these places, even if you're not specifically teaching in one of them. That is very true. Easy to go visit regional countries. And here are some other Central and Eastern European countries that might interest you. As you see there, Bulgaria, Romania, Slovakia, Hungary, Poland, uh, these are growing economies and therefore have growing paid TEFL marketplaces. Uh, so they are on the rise. Uh, if you wanna be in there as it's developing that part of the world, go and check it out. They want you to be there. And let's hear from another one of our alumni teaching in Europe. What do you say? All right, start the reel, let's see it. Hi, my name is Sarah Tomlinson and I'm from Rio Linda, California. I am an alumni of the International TEFL Academy um, and participated in their program at the end of 2011. Um, after finishing my program uh, with uh, ITA, I had the opportunity to move and teach English in Istanbul, Turkey for a year. Um, if it wasn't for that program uh, and the guidance that I received while attending the program, I wouldn't be where I'm at, um, where I'm at today. Um, I'm currently pursuing a master's in uh, TESOL and I am also a part-time English language instructor here in the Silicon Valley. It's completely changed my career path. Having been in the legislative field uh, previously, I was very unhappy and didn't think that uh, I would ever enjoy work. But once I had the opportunity to teach English in Istanbul, which I had, uh, which I never would have done if it wasn't for, again, my program uh, at ITA, but even more so, I never would have even considered Istanbul, Turkey, if it wasn't for the guidance I received from my advisor, John Bentley. Uh, John helped me realize that uh, there were so many different places I could teach in the world and why not take a chance in going to some place like Turkey which is exotic and special and unique and was all of the things that he said it would be. Um, I got to go and see the cave, uh, the cave dwellings in Cappadocia. I got to see the beautiful beaches of southern Turkey in Izmir and Kushadisi and on top of it I got to see the Black Sea in northern Turkey. Um, all of these places are things and locations I never imagined. Uh, I even wanted to go and see, but I'm so happy I had the opportunity to do so and had the opportunity to gain, again, these life experiences, which, you know, will probably be unparalleled um, to a lot of the things I experienced throughout my life. I had resume guidance. I had... Um, uh, cover letter help and I was even able to discuss what was expected in terms of visa applications or um, any other bureaucratic paperwork I was going to face when living abroad um, and I don't know that other programs could have offered me that and I feel that's another unique aspect that drew me to ITA and has made me very pleased with my decision to go there. Um, I hope that uh, other people consider it because the program was great for me and uh, for anyone that's considering 
even slightly about going abroad to teach, I highly recommend you look into the ITA um, certificate program because it changed my life and you never know if it's going to be able to change yours too. Thank you everyone for watching International TEFL Academy's video on teaching English in Europe. For further questions, more information, resources, you name it, connect with your TEFL advisor and discuss your options in Europe, around the world, you name it. Uh, if you don't have an advisor yet, no problem. Just give our main number a call and an advisor will be happy to work with you. Have a great day. Thanks, guys.